Hi, Mark here from PondAlgaeSolutions.com. And this week, I want to talk about a topic that's gaining a lot of interest in the small pond market uh, for small ponds and water gardens. And that is uh, to discuss a little bit more in depth uh, the tool or the component of pond ionizers. Um, many of you historically probably know that I am not a big fan of using copper for algae control in small ponds. Copper is toxic to algae, and so it's, it's widely used, but there are some uh, trade-offs and risks that you have with copper. Um, ionizers uh, are designed to gradually release copper ions into the water using an electrical charge. And so when these first started to emerge on the market uh, a year or two ago, I was interested in those because I thought that it would provide a small pond owner a way to regulate this a release of copper a little better than simply dumping an algicide into the water. And so I was very interested in that. But uh, on further investigation, and by the way, you're going to see many companies this year offering pond ionizers. Uh, a lot of different varieties and versions, they all operate in the same way in that they release copper into the water. But in this video, I want to talk about what a uh, typical ionization system is made up of, how it works in simple terms, and also some precautionary notes uh, for those of you particularly that have fish. And I'll also discuss briefly where I think this tool could be very, very useful for algae control. So let's get started on a typical pond ionizer system. What I have in front of me is uh, a system called the Triton from Atlantic Water Gardens. And what's included in this kit is a, a control box. And you'll see two buttons to either decrease or increase the amount of copper released into the system a lighted grid here, uh, a power uh, light, LED light, that shows the system is operating. And this actually runs a, a cable um, through to the most important component of the system, which is called the anode. And if you look closely here, this has two copper prongs on it. As electrical current is produced, it's very light current, by the way, but as this current is sent through these probes, the copper is released or it tries to jump from one to the other and as it does the water flow stream will basically wash them into the pond. Um, what you have in a, in a typical install is you simply want to get this um, put in your water flow line someplace so that it can freely circulate throughout the pond. Now along with this kit you also have a, a power cord and then you have a very important tool which is copper test strips and it's important to note that all of these systems, at least at this point in time, are not self-regulating. In other words, you need to keep an eye on the copper concentration and copper level. Um, usually it'll run between 0.02% uh, on up to maybe 0.25%, something like that in terms of parts per million of copper. But you want to keep an eye on this uh, so that you know the copper level isn't getting too high. Now, what's also noted with most of these devices in the instructional sheet is some uh, some precautionary statements. First of all, you want to start with a clean pond. A very dirty pond, heavily laden with organic buildup, uh, oftentimes will have a very unstable pH and you're going to also see that this anode will wear out much more quickly. This, the additional things I want to point out, uh, per manufacturer's instructions, you want to have a pH that's relatively stable. The pH should be between 7.2 and 7.8. Uh, and that's a relatively tight range. If your pond fluctuates a lot more than that, then this will be problematic for you. Additionally, total alkalinity should run about 80 to 120 parts per million. Uh, that's also important to watch because if your alkalinity is traditionally low, in fact, if it drops below 50 parts per million, uh, copper levels can rise rapidly and they can become very toxic to fish. Now, conversely, if you have a high alkalinity reading, you're going to see copper precipitate or dissipate very fast. It just gets used up. And so that anode will actually dissolve a lot more quickly. Under perfect circumstances, this anode should last about a year, maybe a little longer. But if it's getting used up very rapidly, it, it could only last a few months. Each one of those anodes, which is the only replaceable component of the system, uh, costs about $80 to $100 a piece. And so uh, that's something to, to consider when you're looking at this. So uh, the main point I want to make in this is that you need very stable water chemistry in order for this to be safe if you have fish. 
Uh, I've never been a fan of using copper with fish in, in any great degree, and until these systems become somewhat self-regulating, where they can check the copper concentration and adjust automatically, I'm not sure that they're the best thing for a fish pond. Now, where would these be useful? Well, what's interesting about these ionizers is many of them, at least this Triton, for example, can treat very small bodies of water up to 25,000 gallons, and this is a very broad range of coverage. So I believe that if you have an algae problem in a fishless pond, in a uh, pondless waterfall, a fountain, an estuary, uh, decorative types of installations, this could very well provide a form of algae control that requires very little monitoring, very little maintenance. And so they do have a use in the industry. But I, as well as other pond experts, are starting to believe that, uh, you know, maybe they're not the best thing for a fish pond. So uh, that sums up in general what I wanted to talk about today. As always, if you have any comments or questions, you can post those below the video on our blog at pondalgesolutions.com slash blog. I'd be happy to answer additional questions and uh, provide additional information uh, if you need it. So I hope that helps uh, bring to light some interesting uh, uh, new developments in the algae control uh, market for small ponds. And uh, we'll see you again real soon with another pond tip from pondalgesolutions.com. Take care.